Yes, the Lord is risen today. Ah, hallelujah. Sons of men and angels say, Ah, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Ah, hallelujah. Sing ye hands and earth reply. Ah, hallelujah. Lives again our glorious King. Everybody. My name is Amy Little, and I'm the worship leader here at Westside Table. We are glad to see you, all of your faces. I am so thankful for Easter this year. I am thankful for spring. I am thankful for the hope that you and I have, because this Jesus that we, that we sing about lowered himself to the place where he allowed himself to experience the abyss of all of human suffering. There is nothing that can happen to us or that is going on inside of us that he doesn't understand or know or hasn't experienced. And he goes with us. That is the Easter message, that whatever the low is that you are experiencing, he is not afraid to walk it with us. And he has conquered death. And so we have life in darkness, hope over despair. And we believe that there is power in the name. So we sing like the psalm tells us, awake my soul and sing, sing of his praises. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks 
into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. There is a sound I love to hear. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Sing, awake my soul and sing. Awake my soul and sing. Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. Oh, sound that changes things, the sound of his people on their knees. Oh, wake up, you slumbering, it's time to worship him. Awake, oh, my soul, and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise aloud. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, we are so glad you are here. Welcome to West Side Table. I'm Latonya Warden, the Director of Ministry. And I see a lot of new faces out there, regular faces. Welcome. We know it's not easy to try a new place if you are new. And we welcome you here at West Side Table. We always say there's a place for you at the table. We have a great day of worship planned for you. We will hear about resurrection gift that God gives us as we learn once again to see the Lord and live in a new way because of what God has done. We have our Easter candy, bu candy buffet. If you haven't seen it, it's over here in the corner. Um, so we hope you will stay after and have lots of candy. Please, please, please take it all away. <laughs> 
Um, we are so thankful for all the ways you help us build a bigger table. Now, will you please join me in the Easter greeting on the screen behind me? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. You may be seated. My name is Daniel Ogle. I'm the pastor here at West Side Table. And on behalf of all of us, we want to say thank you. We are so glad that you've chosen to celebrate and join us here on Easter Sunday. As you came in, I hope that you were well greeted by our folks. And as you came in on your row, you may see an attendance pad on one side of your row. We hope that you will pass that down. Let us know that you're here. If you're visiting here for the first time, we want to extend a special welcome to you. One of the things that we take seriously is to try to help you feel at home here at this church. On non-Easter Sunday, you would see our greeters in their black t-shirts with a simple message, we're really glad that you're here. And we try to live that out each and every day. And so I want to say how grateful and thankful I am that you're here this morning. At this time, we're going to invite our West Side kids to head next door. They're going to have their own activity. So as we like to say, if you uh, are of that age, we'd love for you to head next door. Or if you don't want to listen to me, you can head uh, next door as well. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to share a couple um, things this morning with you. Um, as some of you might be able to see we're kind of running out of room uh, here in the back room at Round Trip Brewing, which is a great problem to have. And so I want to, sh we, as many of you know, we've been in conversation with the folks at Collins Memorial United Methodist Church up on Bolton Road about merging with them and kind of moving the base of our operations to that church property. And so it's been a long process, and I want to share with you that about a month ago, the folks at Collins voted to approve that merger. And then this Monday night, Peachtree Road voted to approve that merger. And so, so what that will mean is in sometime in the near future, uh, in the next several months, we will begin working to make that space ready to receive you and to serve the community. Let me be clear, until you are told, we're gonna to meet right here every Sunday for worship. And so we would love to worship with you, but we really believe that this is an answer 
to prayer. It's an answer to opportunity. It's a sign of God's victory at work in the life of our church and really is a result of all the faithfulness that you have shown over these last couple years. We started, as many of you know, with about 35 people. And if you look around in this room this morning, there's a lot more than 35 people. And so we're so thankful and grateful for you. I want to share also this morning something I'm thankful for, that our church becomes all it can be because you share what God is doing here that you share and you invite and you welcome people to church. So a couple of weeks ago, one of our core members here, one of our leaders, Deandra Bowling, told me, she says, Daniel, I got someone coming this week. She said, I got someone coming to church. That means don't preach too long and don't say anything stupid. <laughs> That's right. And so, and so then Amber came and so I got a note from Amber earlier this week. She said, Daniel, I got two rows coming on Sunday. And so the way people experience the grace of God in this church is because you invite people and you share the good news of what God is doing. And so we're grateful for all the ways that God is at work, all the ways that God is moving in the life of our church. We have so many things to celebrate this Easter Sunday, and we know that you come into this place with things on your heart things on your mind. There are joys and celebrations in your life, and some of you are coming with challenges and concerns in your life. And what we believe about God is that God is with us in all of it, that God is with us in all of it, and that resurrection and victory has something to say about the lives that we actually live. And so in that spirit and that truth, I hope that you'll join me as we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for your Easter victory, that you love us too much to leave us as we are, that you love us too much not to come back for us, that you love us so much that you rose for us. God, we confess in the midst of everything we got going on, in the midst of all the challenges, in the midst of all the concerns, in the midst of all the worries, in the midst of all the fears that we can lose our way. That sometimes like those disciples, we wander off. And sometimes like your early followers, we forget all that you have done for us. And yet you forgive us, you restore us, you redeem us, and you renew us. And so today we come to worship that you are the God who overcomes pain that you are the God who overcomes the power of sin in our lives, that you are the God who overcomes evil, and that you are the God whose love is so strong that even death does not get the last word over you. And so we pray that you might remind us of that, that we might remember that, that you might empower us with your spirit so we can walk with confidence and boldness and truth today and all the days that you give us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. This time I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the Easter Gospel. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and she went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out, and they went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. 
Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. And he saw and he believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where have you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The first thing I want to say is Tennessee plays at 2 o'clock, so I ain't going long. Okay? Easter begins in grief. Easter begins in grief. Mary goes to the tomb because that's what she's supposed to do. She goes to the tomb because Jesus is supposed to be dead. She goes to the tomb because it's what you do to honor someone who's meant something to you. She goes to the tomb. She goes to the graveyard. She goes there out of obligation. She goes there because she had believed. She went there because he had declared over her who she was. She went to the tomb out of respect. She went to the tomb out of honor. She went to the tomb out of gratitude because Jesus had told her she could believe in a way that she never had before. You see, she had put her hope in Jesus. She had put her hope that he was who he said he was. She had put her hope that he was doing something new for everybody, but mostly she had put her hope that he had a new word for her, and he had a new word for her life. And on Friday on a hill, her hope was dashed. And on Saturday, she waited. And I suspect as she was walking, making her way to the graveyard, she remembered what Jesus had said on Good Friday. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I think Mary probably asked that question too. Why have you forsaken me? Why did you make me believe? Why did you invite me to believe in these promises? And yet here we are. You see, because you and I know that, don't we? You and I know what it's like to believe and feel like a fool. You and I know what it's like to put our hope in something only for it to be dashed. You and I know what it's like to dream only to end in despair. You and I know what it's like to believe that this next time won't be like the thousand times before. And yet it turns out that you walk straight into a thousand and one. 
We know what it's like to make that walk to the graveyard. We know what it's like to make that walk to the tomb. You see, because Mary wasn't making that walk in faith. She was making that walk in obligation. She wasn't making that walk in belief. She was making that walk because somebody had to do it, and she was the one who was going to do it. And when she got to the graveyard, you see, it got worse. Because, you see, he wasn't there. The stone had been rolled away, and she didn't know what to do. She wasn't believing in resurrection. She was believing in theft. She wasn't believing in Easter hope. She was believing that they had added insult to injury. When she saw the stone rolled away, she thought the worst, and so she said, just tell me where he is. Some of you have asked that question before, haven't you? Tell me where he is. Tell me where he is when I really need him. Tell me where he is when the chips are down. Tell me where he is when I need some hope. Tell me where he is when I need some victory in my life. Tell me where he is. And so there are two questions. What are you looking for? That's what they ask her. What are you looking for? Who are you looking for? What is it that brought you to this place? And she says, I'm looking for Jesus. What have you done with him? Where have you taken him? I don't care why you did it. Just show me where he is. And then there's another voice. You see, Mary thinks it's the gardener. She says, what is it that you're looking for? And she says, again, just tell me where he is. Because more than anything else, I need to know where Jesus is. Because that's where I need to be. And you see, everything turns on what happens next. He calls her by name. He calls her by name. He says, Mary, and she knows. She hears her name, and, he, and she knows. She hears her name, and she believes. She hears her name. She says, my Lord and my God, because he called her by her name. Do you remember what he said? Do you remember that story? I suspect Mary remember it. Do you remember when he said, I'm the good shepherd? I'm the one who lays my life down for the sheep. I have come so that they might have life and have it to the fullest. And do you remember what he said? My sheep know my voice. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. The Easter gospel is that Jesus calls us by name. The Easter gospel is that Easter isn't just a once a year kind of thing, that Easter isn't one of those days where even the pastor wears a coat on Easter Sunday. <laughs> Some of y'all about fell out when you walked in up here. But Easter Sunday so we remember the truth of every day. You see, because Easter isn't just a day for the crowd. Easter isn't just a general kind of truth. Easter is for you and for me. Because Easter is the declaration of a God who says, I love you too much to stay away. Easter Sunday is the day that God shows up and says, you are worth it all. Easter is the day that says, no power formed against me can stand. Easter Sunday is the day when we are called by name. 
We are, he calls us by our name. And that's how we believe. That's how Mary would come to say, I have seen the Lord. That's what led Mary to say, I know that there is a Redeemer and that my Redeemer lives. Easter Sunday happens because Mary hears and knows the voice that calls her name, that says the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. Easter Sunday is the declaration of victory by a God who calls you by name who knows everything about you and loves you despite all of it. Easter Sunday is the declaration of a victory of a God who is with you. Easter Sunday is the declaration of victory by a God who says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Easter Sunday is the day when God calls you by name. So I got a question. Have you seen the Lord? Have you seen the Lord? Is there a time when you can look back in your life and you can say, yeah, I've seen the Lord? Is there a time when you can look back and you said, I don't really see a way, but God made a way, and you can say, I have seen the Lord? Is there a time when you weren't sure how you were going to find that job, but somehow it showed up, and you can say, I have seen the Lord? Is there a time when you can look back and say, things were so hard, the relationship was so broken, I don't know how it can possibly mend, and yet somehow it was healed, and you can say, I have seen the Lord. Is there a time when you've been so far down, you didn't want to get out of bed? Is there a time when you've been so far down, that you didn't know how you were going to make it? Is there a time when things have been so hard, so brutal, so rough, you didn't have any belief left? And you're here today because you are a sign of God's victory, because you have seen the Lord, because the Lord showed up in your life. And I got one more question. Is there somewhere in your life where you need to see the Lord? Is there somewhere in your life where you need the victory of the God who shows up again on Easter? Is there somewhere in your life where you got some pain in your life where you need some healing? Is there somewhere in your life when you've got some doubt and you need some belief? Is there somewhere in your life where you're, all you know is despair and you need some hope? Is there somewhere in your life where you need reconciliation? Is there somewhere in your life where you can't do it by yourself, but all you're going to need is a movement of God because you know if God shows up, God can do it. Easter Sunday is the declaration that God loves you too much to stay away. Easter Sunday is the declaration that God cares about your life. Easter Sunday is the declaration that nothing is impossible with God. Here's why we come together on Easter. Because Easter says despair is not your destiny. Here's why we come together on Easter. Because Easter says that even when things haven't worked out, that is not the end of your story. Easter, we worship together on Easter because nothing can separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Because the curtain was ripped. And on Easter Sunday, the tomb was empty, not because someone stole him, not because someone hid him, but because God rose for you and me and all of us. Easter Sunday is the victory of God. Not one time, not once a year, but every year, every month, every day, every hour, every minute, every second, Easter is the victory of God And this is the hope in which we stand. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. We have seen the Lord. Let us pray.
God, we give you thanks for this, your Easter victory, your hope that brings us forward each and every day. May we remember today that this is not just for one Sunday, but this is the story of our lives today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This time I'm going to ask you to stand as you're able as we respond in faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We're so thankful that you're here. On behalf of our church, we want to say once again how grateful and thankful that you've chosen to worship with us at West Side Table. In just a minute, we're going to continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And I want to thank you for your generosity. I want to thank you for all the ways your giving makes a difference in the life of our church. I want to say this morning that this is really a time for our regular attenders, that this is a time for our regular members. If you're here for the first time and you want to give, we ain't going to turn that away. But this is simply, but really that this moment, we are so glad that you're here. And so if you're here and part of our church, we invite you to be part of this as we give back a portion to God of what God has given to us. Will you join me as we pray together? Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you've given to us. As we now return a portion back to you, may you multiply and magnify these gifts for your work in our church, our community, and the world that you love so much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. 
the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe out of the silence. A roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence oh, Please stand as you're able as we come to the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace and harmony with one another. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who haven't been here for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and your Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples 
And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, our very lives, in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ, broken and given for us so that our lives might be made whole. And this is the blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation, the cup for which we give thanks. In the United Methodist Church, we serve an open communion table. What that means is that you don't have to be a member of West Side Table to receive the grace of God that's on offer for you at this table. You don't have to be a member of the United Methodist Church. You don't have to be a member of any church. You simply want to have to receive the grace of God that's on offer and available for you here. I am not the host of this meal. Our church is not the host of this meal. Jesus Christ himself is the host of this meal, and his invitation is that you might come and receive. At West Side Table, we offer communion in two ways. The first way is via intinction, where you'll be invited to bring, as you walk up, to make your hands in the shape of the cross. One of our servers will give you a piece of bread, and you'll be invited to dip it in the cup. We also have these gluten-free communion cups available as well. If you would like to receive communion that way, simply come and receive those from our servers with the small basket. With those who are assisting, please come forward. And these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Please come.
Let us pray. Mighty and compassionate God, you have brought us over from death to life through your Son, our risen Savior, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. We are grateful for all that God has given us. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Sing praise the Father. Praise the Father.
Thank you, worship team. Um, thank you, everyone, for worshiping with us today. I hope you will meet me over at the candy buffet. <laughs> Did he? Got it. All right. So I want to uh, make another announcement. We have a bonus. Uh, Rollick, who is standing at the very back, is one of the guys who runs uh, Johnny's Pizza here off Chattahoochee. And so for the kids, he's bought free cheesecake. So, and they are back at the back as well. So, sorry parents, a lot of sugar. <laughs> May you receive this benediction. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He has come back for you. He's come back for you in love. He's come back so that you may have the life that you were made for. Today is a declaration of victory for the God who loves you too much to stay away. May you know that, may you believe that, may you live that, may you walk in that confidence today and every day. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Easter. <laughs>